Right, this next problem is not in your packet, uh, and so you can either uh, copy this onto, if you can find a, a blank page at the, like the back or the front of your packet or a mostly blank page, uh, you could copy it there, or if you want to put it in uh, your just uh, notebook for today, that's, that's fine. Uh, but write down the problem. Um, so a blimp pilot wants to follow a course that is due north. The blimp can move at 26 kilometers an hour in still air. There is a wind of 10 kilometers an hour to the east. What is the heading the pilot should follow, and how fast will the blimp travel relative to the ground? Um, if you don't remember what a heading and a course are, uh, those should be in our notes uh, from uh, our last our last day of notes on this. Um, and yeah, uh, I would like you to go through the problem solving process and try to solve the problem. I will, uh, in, in a second here, I will go over the entire solution. If you don't get through the entire problem, watch as much of the solution as is necessary to get you to something that is different than what you did. Uh, or gets you unstuck, uh, and then pause the video again, and uh, don't finish watching the solution until you have uh, finished the problem to the best of your ability. Okay, so uh, go ahead and pause the video, try to solve the problem. Here we go. So, uh, the, uh, we got our blimp. Um how fast it can move compared to the air. Uh, it says there is a wind. Of course, wind is just made out of air. Uh, so I guess you could use A or W, whichever you want. Uh, I, I probably shouldn't underline both of those. Uh, we, should just, we should just use one or the other. Let's, let's use W for wind. Why not? It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Either A for air or W for wind. They're the same thing, though. The air and the wind are the same thing. Um... And uh, we've got the pilot, who, of course, is in the blimp. Um, do, 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 and uh, how fast would blimp travel relative to the ground? Okay, so the ground. Cool, so we got our three things. Um, a blimp wants to follow a course. So the course is the direction something moves compared to the ground. And so the blimp compared to the ground... Uh, we don't know this yet, uh, but we know the course is going to be due north. Um, there is a wind, uh, so that's going to be the velocity of the wind or the air, either way. Uh, when we say the wind is blowing at 10 kilometers an hour to the east, uh, that, that is always th the way we measure the wind is you stand on the ground and see how fast the uh, air appears to be moving. And so the velocity of the wind uh, is going to be compared to the ground uh, the way this is given. Uh, so that's going to be 10 kilometers per hour to the east. Um, I missed a piece here. The blimp can move at 26 kilometers an hour in still air. Uh, so that means that the velocity of the blimp relative to air, uh, which of course the wind is just a, a moving chunk of air. And so whether we're talking about relative to the air or the wind, it's the same thing. So the velocity of the blimp compared to the, since I'm using W, Okay, so how fast the blimp moves through the air, or how fast the blimp moves through the wind, uh, is 26 kilometers per hour. Um, and we don't have a direction because uh, it just says that in, you know that how fast, how fast the, that's how fast the blimp moves through the air, but it doesn't say what direction it's pointing. Uh, I want to know what heading should the pilot follow. So the heading is the angle the vehicle is pointing, which is also the direction it moves relative to the medium it is moving through. And so uh, this is what we are looking for in part A. Uh, and then how fast will the blimp travel relative to the ground? So the blimp relative to the ground is this. And so we're just looking for a speed in part B, because uh, just how fast, and so it's just the magnitude of that vector. The most common mistake people make on this problem is that they assign the 26 kilometers an hour to the north and they just make a happy triangle that goes 10, 26 and makes a right triangle. Um, that, that's not what happens. Uh, this is another one of those problems where we have partial information about some of our vectors. And so if you didn't have your information set up this way, uh, you should pause the video right now and uh, resolve. Um, okay, so moving on with our solution. The uh, equation we're going to use, so we got uh, some velocity plus some velocity is going to give us some velocity. We've got b at the beginning twice. We've got g at the end twice. 
And the only one at the beginning and the end is W, so that must be the subscript right here. Okay, cool. Um, to draw this, uh, it's always easiest to start with the, the vector that we actually know in its entirety. And so again, I will draw that uh, sort of in the middle-ish of my page, so I have plenty of space available. Um, I don't know where the rest of this is going to go, so I'll keep my labels kind of tight in here. Um, all right, so the blimp compared to the ground has to go north, and the blimp compared to the ground is the resultant. Okay, so my resultant has to be connected either tip to tip or tail to tail, uh, and uh, with uh, this one. And so if it's going to be tip to tip, uh, do like this. I can make this as long as I need to. Uh, of course, there is also another uh, diagram for this uh, where the north is connected uh, tail to tail. Uh, and of course, you would make that you know, longer as you need to. Uh, and then it says uh, the last bit is that the blimp compared to the uh, wind, which is our other one connected tip to tail with the uh, 10 is 26. That is going to be, that's going to be a very tall triangle. Uh, let me make this a little bit shorter. Just so fits on the camera here. Cool, something like that. Uh, or, so this would be, uh, BW is 26, let me, um, fit nicely. Uh, the alternative diagram, uh, we can just add in the other order, so we could go east, uh, north of east, and get VVG going north, uh, V... VW is 26, and VWG uh, is 10. Okay, now, at this point, uh, and this is especially true with these with these problems where everything is all weird and you can't just draw the arrows and you gotta sort of think creatively to get it all to work. Uh, pause, and don't pause the video, but just, just, just stop, stop your brain for a second and make sure that everything actually is doing what it's supposed to, that everything's connected in the way, that everything's drawn the right way. This is where it is the easiest to accidentally flip your arrows so they're pointing in the wrong direction or have them connect wrong or, or who knows what else what. So VBG has to be pointing north. I go find my VBG. It is pointing north. Both versions. Good. VWG is 10 to the east. WG is 10 to the east. 10 to the east. VBW is 26 long. 26, 26. And most importantly, they are connected in the right order, hopefully. BW and WG are the ones connected tip to tail. BG is the resultant. Uh, so BW and WG connected tip to tail. BG goes tail to tail, tip to tip is the resultant. Uh, same thing over here. Uh, BW and WG are connected tip to tail. BG is my resultant. There are diagrams uh, where any one of those things could not be true. You can draw a diagram where this points north, this is 10 east, this is 26, but you have failed to actually do this. You can draw a diagram where you've done this, but you failed to do one of these things. Uh, you have to pause and make sure that every single one of these is right. Uh, so then to actually solve it, part A, uh, we want the heading, uh, which we said was the angle the blimp is moving at compared to the wind. So that's going to be either this angle or the alternate one is here. So I'm going to find the west of north angle, but you could find the north of west angle, and they'll mean they'll mean the same thing. Uh, so that's going to be uh, I got opposite and hypotenuse. Uh, the arc sine ten over twenty six. Uh, twenty two point six degrees uh, west of north. Or alternatively, uh, what would this be? 60, no, 57.4 degrees uh, north of west is equally good. Uh, and part A only asked for the heading. It didn't, didn't ask for a full vector, didn't ask for the full velocity, just the heading, which is just the direction. Uh, and so that's that's all we need. Uh, for part B, we wanted to know how fast the 
Blimp was traveling relative to the ground. Uh, so we want the magnitude of VBG. That is, uh, it's a right triangle, uh, but it's not the hypotenuse. We use the Pythagorean theorem, but it'll be hypotenuse squared minus the other uh, side squared equals this side squared. Uh, so 26 squared minus 10 squared root is going to be uh, 24. Uh, oh, because it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle, right? Yep, it's one of the fancy triangles. Okay, yep, that makes sense. Uh, meters per second. Um, and that's, that's, that's how fast this is going. Um, and it didn't, didn't ask for the full velocity, it just asked how fast, uh, and so we don't need the direction, we just need how fast, 24 meters per second. Uh, good to check this, just to make sure it seems reasonable, uh, especially the heading. So the heading, we figured out the, the pilot needs to point west of north, well, let's just see. So the wind is blowing east. And so if you want to not get blown off course, the blimp needs to be pointing uh, at least partially west, and so that makes sense. Uh, and then it eventually wants to get uh, north along the ground, and so it makes sense that the course is going to be both north and west, uh, which is, of course, what we got. Um, yeah, so this is this is where it gets a little bit uglier, and of course you could have a problem that is uh, super ugly, right? Where it looks like this, uh, in terms of you have uh, partial information about multiple vectors, but the diagram looks like this. Uh, and that's fine, as long as you go through the steps and write down what you know, organize your information, figure out how everything goes together, draw your diagram, double check that diagram, triple check the diagram to make sure everything about it is set up right. Once you get it set up, then it's just a geometry problem. Um, but uh, again, I know our first few examples, we assumed, in the first few examples, we were just able to sort of like add together the given information. That's, that's just simply not going to be the case for the more complicated problems.